if we have a continuous time signal, say x of t equals e to the minus a t times a unit step, and I want to sample that, how can I then represent that as a function of m? How can I represent that as a discrete time signal? So let me just illustrate that. Um, so in, in the time domain, you would, you would take regular samples. So you took your first sample, sorry, there, the next sample, there, and then there. So this is regular instance of time. Now these stalks are just for illustration, really. So each of these samples is separated by some sample time. Okay, so um, this time here between samples, that's Ts. And Ts is the reciprocal of the sampling rate. So 1 over the sample rate. So the question is, how do I re-represent time as m? And the way to do this is really easy. You simply replace t with n times uppercase t, or ts, your sample period. So if you, if you, if you do that, then you then have this new representation where x of n, so you do that for all values of t. So you can now rewrite it as e to the minus a n t times u. Now it's a discrete unit step of, um, well, initially it would be a continuous n t. Uh, and we can now replace this continuous time unit step with a discrete time unit step. Now what we have is a discrete time representation of our signal x of t. But if we wanted to, to represent this, we would need to represent it as a function of n and not as a, a function of t. So we'd need to replace the axis label t with something else. So in this case we're going to use n. And n isn't time. n is the, the coefficient of t, so it's an integer. It's an, in, in, an index that we use to represent time, but it isn't time. So here, n equals 0, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for example, when n equals 3, that means that we have three times the sample period. That doesn't mean that time is three. So if I were to say x of three, that means the fourth sample. The sample when n equals three. So this is the first sample, second sample, third sample, and fourth sample. The fourth sample is x of three. So n is my new axis because we now have a discrete time signal and I've replaced all occurrences of the lowercase t with my new variable n. But I've done that by using n multiplied by the sample period, uppercase uh, t. And just so that we're not confused between whether something is continuous time or um, discrete time, we use these um, square brackets. So the square brackets indicate discrete time, whereas the um, normal brackets here, they represent continuous time. Now in some textbooks and some websites, you'll find that they use the same brackets, they don't distinguish, but in this module we'll be using those square brackets. So that's just a few comments on how to get from continuous time to discrete time. And we can now replace this continuous time unit step with a discrete time 
units there. Now what we have is a discrete time representation, the pi signal x of t. But if we wanted to, to represent this, we would need to represent it as a function of n and not as a, uh, a function of t. So we'd need to replace the axis label t with something else. So in this case, we're going to use n. And n isn't time. n is the, the coefficient of t. So it's an integer. It's an, in, in, an index that we use to represent time, but it isn't time. So here, n equals 0, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for example, when n equals 3, that means that we have 3 times the sample period. That doesn't mean that time is 3. So if I were to say x of 3, that means the fourth sample. The sample when n equals 3. So this is the first sample, second sample, third sample, and fourth sample. The fourth sample is x of 3. So n is my new axis because we now have a discrete time signal and I've replaced all occurrences of the lowercase t with my new variable n. But I've done that by using n multiplied by the sample period uppercase uh, t. And just so that we're not confused between whether something is continuous time or um, discrete time, we use these um, square brackets. So the square brackets indicate discrete time, whereas the um, normal brackets here, they represent continuous time. Now in some textbooks and some websites you'll find that they use the same brackets they don't distinguish but in this module we'll be using those square brackets so that's just a few comments on how to get from continuous time to discrete time